asking me to um, to speak. And actually, um, I loved Ela's talk to start with because I love the history of archaeology. I'm one of these history of archaeology nerds, and um, and I think uh, the 20th century in particular is a very fascinating fascinating time. And so as a result, I'm afraid I'm, I'm going to slightly repeat a couple of things that um, Ela said because I look back in the files that we've got um, in Historic Environment Scotland for the foundation. I realised obviously there was a thing in 1990 which I didn't pick up on. So I picked up on 1991 and of course, like you say, it's 25 years, how do you put it, community-led stewardship. Um, and um, we've been involved as an organisation and funder for aspects of that and it was interesting to look at the files to see pilots, legacies, development projects and various aspects that we've, um, that we've been involved with. Um, for a bit of fun, I sort of thought, well, what was going on in 1991? And having just had the Olympics, Liz McColgan won the uh, gold medal at the World Championships in uh, Tokyo. The Prime Minister was actually John Major, because Margaret Thatcher went in the autumn of 1990. Prince Charles resigned from the National Museum over the design for the new wonderful bit of the museum. <laughs> so I thought it was an interesting tidbit from 1991, which I hadn't realised. The Donald Firth Bridge um, was opened. The very first alt article by Irvin Welsh that ultimately became Train Spotting was published. Brian Adams was number one for 16 <laughs> weeks. You're going to have that going around the he your head for the rest of my talk now. And actually, um, to bring it quite topical, it was the year before the Maastricht Treaty was signed. Um, and in, as I say, in thinking about the history of this, I look back through the files to look at what we had. And the scheme, as, as Ela said earlier, that the phase... Um, which I think at that stage we were calling a pilot, um, was funded between 2006 and 2009 by Historic Scotland, the predecessor to Historic Environment Scotland. And so I looked at the original bid form, and a lot of the things that were highlighted in that bid form with regards to working with local groups and local authority archaeology services, looking at conservation needs, educational opportunities, communi community involvement, sustainable partnerships, helping local groups proceeding um, with various aspects, looking at landowners, environmental conservation, and then um, all the aspects of partnership working, which actually we've heard about from already, and we'll be hearing more about from today. So in that sense, um, it's been an incredibly positive um, experience, I think, probably for everybody involved. Now, obviously, the current phase has been going since 2001, so I'm not going to suddenly delve any further into the, into the history, because you've had that from ELA. Um, but um, in 2015, a year ago, the Scotland's first strategy for archaeology was launched by the Cabinet Secretary, and we're just at the um, phase of doing the delivery plan and trying to gather um, a bit more momentum for the strategy. There's a lot already happening, and Adopt a Monument is a key aspect of delivering it, and there will be a lot more to happen. So in terms of talking about the view from Historic Environment Scotland, I thought I would frame it Around, um, around the archaeology strategy and the key themes of the archaeology strategy. I don't know if you can read this at the back, but I have, we, there are various copies of this here, and I've brought some with me, and I don't want to take a single one home with me, so please do pick up um, copies of this. It's also available online. Um, and in terms of actually um, the sort of the whole principle and ethos and how we've been thinking about it, what we've been trying to argue is that archaeology is for everyone, and Adopt a Monument is, is a key part of, of, of actually that delivery, because that whole mantra is archaeology belongs to everybody here. And so we want to actually use all the opportunities that archaeology provides, and then also tell Scotland's stories in their global context. In terms of the strategy itself, I'll try and make this a bit more interesting than just talking about a strategy, because strategies can seem a bit dry. Um, as I say, we've um, we've got a published version now, and we've got five strategic aims. And uh, Adopt a Monument is actually delivering on every aspect of this. Um, so again, that's something else that is, uh, is good to celebrate. Um, one of the other aspects we have in the strategy is actually about internationalising archaeology and supporting that. And you'll be hearing about, from some of the contacts in Finland... The team have been um, doing a great job in selling their message overseas, and I've certainly run into Cara and Phil at various EAA conferences over the years. The Irish Heritage Council are obviously um, implementing a pilot project, and Ireland has been one of the areas that our government has asked us to work more closely with on an archaeological level, um, which has been very positive for us. 
Um, and I was delighted to see the front cover of um, the latest Archaeology Scotland with Rebecca on a camel in Egypt. <laughs> That's just fabulous. Um, in terms of the first strategic aim, which is about broadening and deepening the impact and public benefit of archaeology, and we've got a series of aspects around that. One of the aspects of this is about the legacy of projects. And uh, we've just heard from John Haylett about the Arden American project and where that's gone into. And so I just thought we just thought we'd highlight um, one example from each one. And in terms of the legacy um, that's actually came out of the initial work that happened in Arden American, and you've heard, just heard the dynamism of where um, all the work on that peninsula is going yet, and I still haven't been, but you've now told me the various, the best routes to get there. So I might go through Mull, might be the best way uh, for me to get there. The second one is actually all about enhancing understanding to increase knowledge, understanding, and interpretation of the past. And in that, it's actually looking about what the research priorities are, um, how we actually get the message about archaeology, how we get the interesting stories across to people, and you'll hear quite a few more of those this afternoon. And as an example of that, uh, we've got Kiel Chapel on Loch Linney, where we've got a late medieval chapel dedicated, dedicated to St. Columba, which although it ceased to be a place of worship from 1630 onwards, the burial ground was still in use in the 19th century, and the Friends of Kiel group, who've been involved in the Doctor Monument, became concerned <coughs> after a graveyard survey identified unique gravestones. And they've got various associations with James of the Glen, who makes a prominent appearance in Robert Louis Stevenson's Kidnapped. And so it's a regular attraction for visitors to the area, and that's an, area, an aspect where they've actually enhanced the understanding as well as promoted the site. The third aim is all about caring and protecting, to make sure that we care for and we value sites. And um, as well as actually supporting the expertise that we require in the decision making, as well as, as I say, this broader valuing. And one of the examples of that um, is Raymore Stone Circle, which was excavated um, and relocated in the 1970s as part of the construction of the A9. And so the ring cairn is currently sited within Ashton Road Park. And the, the Adopted Monument Project has been building on previous work completed by the Raymore community to transform the monument into a valued feature within Ashton Road Park, appreciated by the local Raymore community. And my understanding is the group were aiming to erect an interpretation panel, provide active engagement activities to the local community, as well as develop a sustainable conservation strategy for the site. Now, the fourth um, aim, encouraging greater engagement, is I think that a Doctor Monument is delivering in absolute buckets. Um, and it's actually the collaborative working, active involvement, enhanced archaeological presentation, learning for all ages. And um, we decided that we weren't going to single out um, a single one for this. And I was interested in today's notes. Um, there's a list at the back of all the projects that have been worked on recently. And just in this, it amounts to um, two to three pages. So when I looked at it, I thought, I'm not going to highlight a single one. Um, sorry, this is some of the things that we've been looking to highlight um, in this whole vein. So I sort of looked at the, very, at the evaluation report for the current phase of work on a Doctor Monument, which has been said has, been, has got principal funding from the Heritage Lottery Fund and some support funding from the Historical Brand of Scotland. And in the end, I thought I'd just list all of them. So sorry, no pretty pictures on this one. Because every single one of these projects is delivering greater engagement uh, for the heritage, the length and breadth of Scotland. The one thing I couldn't find was a map. We've seen various maps today. But actually, do we have a map with every single Doctor Money project that's ever happened? Did he get, get a new project? <laughs> <laughs> we'll just keep dropping dots on yeah. something and you'll, you'll be fine. But, I mean, if I had shown a map, you would see a new... I think we saw the one from the pilot project that Ela showed earlier, which was a discrete at that point. It was only about a dozen or so projects, but it was the length and breadth of Scotland. Um, so it is actually about maximising um, the interest and the geographic, as well as there's been a, a, a really quite a broad chronological depth um, to the archaeology as well. The last one I thought I would um, mention is innovation and skills, to ensure that people have the opportunity to acquire and use archaeological skills 
and that we have that's underpinned by innovation in understanding um, learning and funding. And I was delighted to just hear uh, Barry Maxwell's one on the Accord project because that is a fabulous example of science and innovation, which is actually using sort of cutting edge um, technologies for both research and for community benefit. Um, so I needn't say more about that one um, just yet. And these are some of the aspects that we're looking at. Now, somebody was saying to me last week that you can't necessarily read the color scheme very much. So this is a fairly new PowerPoint template for us. Can you see the text on the back? But well, I'm going to feed that back to people who do our template because um, that's useful. Um, would it be, is, is, it, is the lettering in white easier to see? Yes. Yeah, okay, it's too small. Okay, thank you, it's too small and it's too dark probably. Thank you. Um, and so I wanted to finish off really by mentioning the Women at War project, um, which worked with female volunteers focusing on the needs of local women who wanted to learn key trans additional key transferable skills as well as take part in a valuable heritage recording project. And working with local charities, the Adopt a Monument project provided training for volunteers which enabled them to survey, photograph and record abandoned buildings relating to the World War II Fern Airfield. And the main emphasis of the project looked at the role of women who served at the airbase um, and during, during World War II. So I thought that that would at least give a brief flavour. You will see why we are keen to fund it, because we're keen to um, see as many people engage with their heritage and with their archaeology as possible, which will help in the, the role that we're playing in delivering the archaeology strategy and then the broader historic environment strategy. So, as I say, I'll point everybody um, to look at the document. I realise that reading a strategy doesn't always sound that exciting, but what I will say is we've got some lovely pictures in this one, so do pick it up and flip through it, at the very least. Um, and otherwise, thank you very much.